how long have you been in, in Portland? The last time that I relocated back there was in 2009. So I've been there throughout from before, during, and uh, I guess after the, the growth of this American phenomenon known as Antifa. So Andy No, as uh, some of you may know, is beaten up by Antifa thugs, and he has written now a book coming out tomorrow inside Antifa's radical plan to destroy democracy. And uh, I hope every one of you will buy it because it's, Im- it's important to read and it is important to enable this man who had literally, literally had to flee the United States for his life. He is now in Britain and I'm speaking to him from there. Or I should say, he is speaking to me from there. Why did you uh, flee the United States? Ever since I was beaten on the streets of Portland by Antifa in the summer of 2019, um, my life has come under increasing threats by these extremists who left me with a brain hemorrhage but uh, did not succeed in killing me. Um, All these stuff threats over... The year and a half has been reported to police. They've showed up to my home before, and nothing happened. And I just think that, um, but the breakdown in the rule of law is just not, it's not just unique to Portland. I think we're seeing that in a lot of urban areas. And given the uh, ratcheting up of what they've been doing uh, in recent months, um, I've really been on borrowed time. So... Um, there was some other stuff that happened, which I can't go into detail yet, but um, it's just, at least for now, temporarily, I've left the U.S. Why didn't you just go to Boise, Idaho? I could have, but I just, I felt like things were very unstable, um, and I didn't, you know, for me, I'm a city person, and I didn't, and I, I could have gone to, I guess, a more rural state and stayed in the city there. But I think um, I already had some connections to the U.K. So I go there pretty frequently um, and a support system that was already here. I think that the last thing that would be uh, helpful for me would be to be isolated uh, mm-hmm. from people on top of the COVID stuff that all of us have been going through already. Are you surprised that Amazon is still featuring your book? A little bit. Um, I think um, Amazon, you know, I guess out of all the, you know, from the different big types, they're not the worst in that they don't cave right away, whereas Twitter, I would say, is probably the most egregious in that whenever there's an outrage mob in campaign they immediately remove people facebook isn't far behind um i'm thankful the book is still available uh, to order on amazon and other sites it was um removed from uh physical sales in portland's largest bookstore called pals but that was because these extremists have showed up outside of uh, the business for six days, causing it to shut down after safety reasons for two of them. Um, you know, some businesses, even if they don't necessarily agree with Antifa's message, they kind of just have to go along now because this is a a movement and organization that makes threats and too often makes good on those threats of violence in Austin. What is the name of that store again in Portland? Powell's? Powell's yeah. Book. So Powell's is under attack from the left for merely making your book available online. Yes, sir. Right. That's so they, right. They, they, you're from Portland. It is about an issue directly impacting Portland, and they won't sell it. They won't allow it in the store for fear of violence against their store from Antifa and other leftists. But at least they have it on the, on their website, and that is not even acceptable to Antifa. 
Your book is about Antifa. How did you do research? I did research by, well, so for the first time uh, that's been published uh, in this book, you readers will get a chance to look at some primary documents from somebody who actually went through the membership process for Rose City Antifa, which is the largest Antifa group in the U.S., and they're based in Portland. And you'll see that this is not merely a grassroots-led, spontaneous, left-wing protest movement. Uh, the, per the process of joining the organization has a vetting process in addition to a radicalization process with extensive amounts of reading and literature and training, training how to fight, how to use firearms. So we are dealing with a homegrown domestic terrorist organization that is connected to many affinity groups. And together, they organize and carry out acts a violence against either private citizens or the state. And that's why throughout months of 2020, cities like Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis and many others were on fire and forced to the ground. What is their end? Yeah, uh, uh, nobody is clear about that other than chaos, which is, I, I do believe, their, their ultimate end. What do you understand it as? Because they've even started violent protests with Joe Biden as president. Correct. They've actually done a lot. So one misconception I try to uh, clear up in the book is that even though the Democrats have coddled them because of a, mu a shared mutual hatred in the previous administration and Trump, um, Antifa do not view the Democrat Party as allies. In fact, they view them as enemies part of the same capitalist system that they're seeking to overthrow and they use capitalism frequently synonymously with fascism by the way um, their end goal is to abolish the united states and not just the destruction of the literal nation state but also to completely delegitimize its founding ideals ideals that are also formed the basis of many other liberal democratic societies. So I know a lot of the violence looks very nihilistic in that it's destruction for the purpose of destruction. But if you actually read their literature and you talk to the extremists, they believe they're working towards a certain goal. And to a degree, they're having a lot of success. Um, Dennis, you may remember that last year for more than three weeks, they actually seized territory in a major American city in Seattle and created this chat and they created a hard border and declared it to be a sovereign area separate from the United States and it was a literal no-go zone for police. Police by a matter of unofficial policy would not go inside there even as people were calling for help every day in and day out even though people were getting killed inside. The victims had to be carried outside the borders of this territory and they also claim territory and autonomous zone in portland in december over the weekend on sunday this should be international news by the way antifa in olympia washington in, in the capital of washington state actually uh sieged a hotel a red lion and there were occupants inside there uh, who had to shelter in place in their room in 40 rooms so it became a hostage situation as well and according to the statement by the city of Olympia, the staff who were assaulted at this red line witnessed these extre extremists bringing in knives, hatchets, and batons. Why did I not hear about this? Tell me when we come back. In the meantime, is it up at uh, DennisPrager.com? His book coming out tomorrow about Antifa. I want you to read it, but even if you don't, please buy it.